Hi everyone, welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today I will be showing my newest cowl project, which is uh, my own design. <laughs> and it's a single cowl, it's gonna have a half twist. Um, if you've seen my episode on my Scandinavian, not called my Scandinavian cowl, maybe it's called that. No, that's a different cowl. The long, the blue cowl and cap, I think it's episode seven. Um, that is the same style as this. So is the Kuvel cowl, which is episode four, although I did not show that cowl sewn together. I just showed it on the blocking board um, flat. So mm, my camera is still a little bit, I thought I adjusted. Okay, I think it's fine today. I'm gonna tentatively assume that the camera's fine. The light is a little, maybe that's better. Yeah, that's a little better. Um, okay, so this, is a single cowl. When it's done, it's going to be approximately 28 to 30 inches long, which will then translate to wide because it's going to go around the neck like this. Um, and it is 144 stitches wide or about, I think it's between 8 and 10 inches like this way, one way. Um, so it's nice and tall. It's a little taller than my um, other ones have been because it's a little bit, um, their stitch count has to account for um, like the, uh, the number of stitches in the horizontal repeat. So you have to have a number that um, all of those repeats fit into evenly. Um, so I chose 48 for that because I have 24 stitch wide bands uh, here but I offset them. So you can see the O's here and the X's here. And so they line up in the middle all the way down. So it's 48 times three, which is 144 total. And then my, so I've alternated larger bands with Peary's, um, all the Peary's change, or the Peary's change every time. Technically the whole, the whole pattern is a twice repeating set of um, seven different lozenges. And all the X's are the same as you can see, like that X, that X that X, that X, and the lozenge shape is the same, but I filled it in differently, which you can see. Sometimes I get my lozenges from um, reference books and sometimes I just take the outline and I fill it in myself, which is really fun. When I release this pattern, it's gonna be more of a recipe. Um, I'll give you the charts that I used for this specifically, and it may be a while, just a heads up. Um, but it, uh, it's, um, yeah, the, uh, what am I even talking about? It's It'll include um, like color in your own or fill in your own, like dot in your own lozenges um, so that you can you can try it for yourself, which is really fun. Um, so again, this is designed by me uh, using a really simple um, design of X's and O's, lozenges and um, the stylized X. This isn't really stylized. It's an obvious X. It just has the things down the middle. Um, I could have changed the X's, swapped them out, trade, changed it up, um, but I didn't. I just wanted to keep it simpler, um, which really helps me um, with like when the pattern, um, you know, changes. I know what to do on the first row, and that's really helpful. And actually, the X is really simple. You, it's pretty easy to memorize that pattern, especially when you do it so many times. Um, and so let's see, each of the wider bands is 13 rows tall, and each of these Peary's are six rows tall, so it's a total of 19. So 19 times 14, because um, there's 14 separate bands, um, sets of bands, is 266, I think. So you should be aiming for um, between sort of 250, 270 for a cowl that fits nice and snugly around your neck. Um, and I'll show this. Again, um, when I discuss the pattern, when I release the pattern, um, like I'll show it to you when I'm wearing it and you'll see that it's half twisted, um, but you don't have to half twist it. You can also make it double the length. Um, my pattern will include that as well. Like how do you make it, uh, how do you make it longer? Um, the short answer to that is that you want to start with closer to a hundred stitches because you're going to be wrapping it around your neck twice and you want it to be double the length. That's it. Um, and you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily need to, need to twist it when you're sewing it or kitchenering it, grafting it, whatever together. Um, so that's cool. And I will say, if you are watching this and you want to like knit one of these now, just email me and I'll send you or uh, email me 
barnabynits at gmail.com. You can DM me on Instagram. You can even just comment below here. I don't know if there's a DM on YouTube. Probably not. No. Anyway, get in touch with me. And um, I'll send you like the sort of basic recipe for this with my charts. And you can just um, alternate them as you see fit. Or And I'll send you a blank like some blank lozenges and you can fill them in um, just because it would be nice to have like more um, pictures up if I'm going to post this on Ravelry so that people can see what they can possibly do um, with a pattern like this or a recipe like this because I think it's a little bit daunting for some folks to start designing their own Fair Isle pieces. Um, this is an easy way to do it because it's, it's just a tube. There's no shaping um, and there's also no like real issues if you aren't getting gauge like just make it a little bit longer if it's the gauge is too tight um, and it'll fit your neck or you know maybe it'll be a little bigger than you thought but that's not a big deal um i'm talking about how i knit this uh i used chow goo red you can see the red in there uh, the lace tips which don't bend um at the um joins um and these are just coconut stoppers super great Definitely get these if you have a problem with stitches slipping off your needles. Um, and I knit it, I'm gonna talk about the colors now. I knit it in um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven colors of a combination of Jameson Spindrift and uh, Jameson and Smith uh, two-ply jumper weight. So you can see that I've got three background, maybe you can't see, I think you can see that I have three background colors. I have the background of the Piri, which is kind of a brownish pink. Um, at first I didn't like it as much, but I, it kind of grew on me. I don't mind it. I think it's fine. Um, Cal's also not for me. It's for my friend Sophie, who uh, usually has, at least these days, her hair is usually pink or purple, so I thought it would match. Um, so I've got this, this light brownish pink, and then I've got a sort of light pink heather, and then I've got a really light purple pink heather. So those are in order. This is the grayish pink. Here it is up close if you can focus yeah sort of well you can see it anyway almost greenish in there it's, it's this is a fascinating color it's called fog um it's hard to find things to go with it um really smoothly though um because it's so bespoke <laughs> this is the medium kind of heather pink lighter pink this is jameson and smith two ply jumper weight in fc 50. um all of these will be in the show notes and then the final color in this um in the bet for the background is Jameson's of Shetland in Orchid, which is not heathered. Um, it's just a really light pinky purple. Really like Orchid. This is a great color. Um, very versatile. Okay, so those are my background colors. Um, within the bigger bands, I use three foreground colors. This is a darker purple. That's really hard to see the difference between the first two. There's a darker purple that's not heathered. Then there's a heathered, slightly lighter purple, and then there's the burgundy, which is pretty easy to see. So those are Jameson's of Shetland in Foxglove and Clover. So here's the, um, I think this one's Foxglove and this one's Clover, but the labels are not on them, so I'm not 100% positive. This one's solid and this one's heathered. You can see there's more pink in it. I don't know why it doesn't focus. If I tap the screen, it'll focus. There we go. That's better. Sort of. <laughs> this is a struggle. Um, and then my burgundy uh, in the middle is Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight in 134 solid shade. Um, and I I did go, so I started with the darkest, or well, in terms of these two colors, I started with the darker one um, and then like not the darkest um, dark, but because all of them are so high contrast, like the lightest color in the whole cowl is this orchid. And the darkest color in the whole cowl is this burgundy, and those are together. Um, but because, which is not necessarily traditional, but because um, all of the colors are high contrast enough, I think it actually looks pretty good. I was afraid that wouldn't look as good, but the, the bigger problem I had was with the fog color not going as well, but no big deal. And then in the smaller Piri's, I have um, two ply jumper weight in FC55 mix, which is kind of a burgundy with some like blue and greenish and almost yellow heather. This is really a really pretty color. Uh, there we go, it's not bad. Okay, so together, dark colors, all pretty similar. 
Oh, that's nice, kind of focused. And mm, can I hold them all at once? Yes, but you won't be able to see them all that well. And light colors. So again, I always, or I don't always do this, but I often try and keep um, keep things simple, simpler at least in a piece like this by just using one color family or like a neutral and then one color family. Um, so like in Kuval, I used green. Um, although I also had a white and a couple of like grayish browns. So neutrals and then one color family. Um, you can see Kuval if you go to episode four or you can um, see it on my Ravelry page. And for my other blue cowl that I did, I chose blue, uh, grayish blue specifically, and then um, a gray and then a white. So two grays and a white, yeah. So that was, again, just, um, yeah, simple. Um, you Obviously you can um, go crazy with your colors. It's fair, I'll, you, sh you should if you want. And especially for your like middle bands, do something that pops. Um, but I've, I'm sort of slowly, um, going towards stuff like that. Um, you'll see in my Bray cardigan, which I'll start showing soon. I think it's like the next series I'm going to do is the Bray cardigan. Um, it's mostly greens, but there is a pop of pink and there's also a light blue. So that's fun. And the pink, um, the pink is really fun in it. It goes well. Um, but you can also get those books. I should have brought them. Um, like Felicity Ford has the Stranded Color Work playbook and the like source book and the coloring book. I got mine from the Woolly Thistle. They're sometimes sold out because they're really popular, um, but I'll link them in the show notes. Um, you can also get Janine Bahus Bajus, The Joy of Color. That's useful too. Um, I think I talked about those actually in my last video, so you can also check it out there. Maybe I didn't. Um, I talked about it in a video that I've recorded, but I'm not sure if it's up yet. <laughs> um, regardless they'll all be linked in the show notes uh those so those books all teach you kind of how to take like a photograph with a bunch of colors in it and translate it into a like a fair isle palette and photos are are best because you can actually like use the photo and um and like see um what uh like colors that match rather than like holding them in your memory um which is useful so you can do that um I'm trying it, like I've tried it with a couple of photographs. They've both been of nature. The first one was of, um, it was of like a waterfall and a bridge and it's a sky and there's some like green around it. And I'll put those in the show notes. I'm happy to like put the pictures with my yarn choices in the show notes so that you can see. Um, but um, I'm still working on it. And then I did another one recently with, um, I live in Washington. Um, so it's cherry blossom season, it's April. And um, I took a picture of, actually it was a magnolia tree. I think there was a magnolia tree, a cherry blossom tree. And then there's like a, a light colored stone building and some very blue sky. And I um, tried a, um, a palette like that. And I liked that too, sort of. So <laughs> I'll share them. Um, you can see they're not great. And I wouldn't, I don't think I would do a sweater that was um, like quite so bold, but maybe like a cap or a pair of mittens. That would be good actually. Mittens are a good way to um, explore colors because they're fun. Like you can make them fun and it's not like that aggressive. Yeah, um, you can pull them out easily because it's not like a really long row. They don't take long. It's almost like a swatch. Although these books teach you how to do like speed swatches um, to see, make sure the colors look nice together. And I've also seen people uh, wrap the colors in on like a bobbin around a bobbin to see if they look nice. I guess you could just like have two of them and do your background colors on one and your foreground colors on the other and then like put them next to each other to see if they if they look good. Although you'd have to be careful to line them up correctly if you were to do that. Um, I guess I, I should tell you that I use this book, the Sheila McGregor Traditional Fair Isle Knitting, um, as sort of a guide for to get my X shape and then she had a bunch of lozenges. She has a whole page. Again, if you haven't seen my videos, this is full of charts. It's amazing. Really, like, really good. Um, so I used, I like, one of the charts for a lozenge. And she's got a few, so I used a few. And then I started doing my own. And it was really fun, actually, to fill in my own, like, lozenge from the same shape to make sure that it fit. Um, so if you want to do something like this, you just have to make sure that... Um, your stitch count stays the same for each band so that your final, you know, 
final number is um, fits into the total number of stitches you have horizontally. Um, and yeah, I actually use stitch markers for this. For each repeat, you can see these little blue. There's blue for the repeats and then there's green for the end of row. Um, the stitch markers are useful because it's a long round. I mean, or it's a long, it's a long repeat. It's 24 stitches and if you get off, it's frustrating. And like, what if you got to the end of the round and you were a stitch off? Oh, that would be terrible. So um, I don't use them for short color work things, but for longer ones, especially like shorter ones where you can see that they're lining up, um, you don't need stitch markers because you can see if you're off because the stitches in the, you know, if it's, especially if it's like an all over pattern, they'll line up um, or they'll, they won't if you miss a stitch or drop something. Um, so be careful. Um, but I always recommend getting this book it's just like the best ever. Um, if you want to learn about uh, why why you should design your own, like how the how the tradition um, works, as in like um, you know they didn't have pattern patterns like we do now. They had chart books like this, and they would do their own charts, and then they would like everything is different. There's no there are no written patterns. You just have your measurements for your thing that you need and you know how many stitches that is based on your gauge and your needles, um, and you just go. And it's um, it's very satisfying to design your own. So um, I'm a big advocate um, for that because it's like eventually, I mean, knitters now are not, um, are not like knitters of, you know, past decades because we, um, we just aren't like, knitting is not fundamental to our survival in the same way that it is or was for lots of people, especially um, in places where wool was a big industry like the UK. Um, and Shetland has a really, um, a really mm, difficult history with that because it was kind of like a way for women to be um, taken advantage of, like they wouldn't pay them very much and they would make them knit all the time. And it was called the truck system. So instead of paying them, like money just for goods they would exchange things and the, the trades wouldn't be that fair um and it was a way to get really high exports without paying um very well for the work um so yeah it's it's a tangled web um and then same thing very similar things happened in norway with selbu mittens although that was much more of a um sort of regular um regular regulatory things in place there to make sure that um, that didn't happen as much, um, but they were like really interesting standards for mittens. You can learn about these if you take Patricia Fortune's um, online classes, um, which is are great. Um, oh, one thing about this that I just remembered to say, um, I always weave in the ends, but I'd never catch floats unless I had like a float that in this you wouldn't, but in some cases you'd have a float that was like eight, ten, ten to ten, eight to ten stitches long. You might want to catch that just for your own tension's sake. Um, but I don't catch floats because they're all tucked in. I do weave in the ends, but one thing you can do if you don't like to weave in ends is you can actually just knot these ends um, probably and leave them because no one's going to see that. You just need to make sure that you pull them tightly enough so that um, there's no holes and gaps in the, at the row end of row spot. But you also don't want to pull too tightly because Shetland wool will break. Um, I always weave in ends just it's just that's my personal preference but you don't have to if you don't want to um especially even like in a hat or a sleeve um saratoga knitting uh her name is lisa not saratoga knitting uh knitting by the sea <laughs> knitting by the sea lisa she um she talked about this in her last video um she made a katie's cap and uh and she just nodded the ends and she's like, yeah, they'll fall down, which is totally true. They will fall down. It doesn't matter um, if you uh, if you don't, if you don't want to weave them in. Because even in a sleeve, they'll just, um, yeah, they'll just felt in. Um, okay, I think that's all. I'm trying to keep this under 20 minutes so that I don't have to transfer it to my laptop to upload it to Instagram. <laughs> um, and we're getting close. So I hope you enjoyed this and that it was informative. Um, maybe I'll just hold this up so I can take a screenshot for my YouTube um, thumbnail and have a good one. I hope it's spring where you are and you are getting vaccinated soon. Take care.